This why should be the most powerful thing in your life. So let me tell you something about being a leader. Every single one of you in here, if you don't get up every single day and acknowledge what your why is, then I would encourage you to do that. You probably have a why. And this is a memorial. And this is a memorial that I started after my first rotation in Afghanistan, where I didn't bring three service members home. Three people, three service members that I did not bring home. That made me reflect. I was on the ground with them. They were killed right next to me. Why them and not me? Survivor's guilt. And I thought, well, <clears throat> that's, that's three. I didn't know what was gonna happen after that. After my third, fourth, and fifth rotations in Afghanistan, I had 16 names. And I ran out of space on this memorial. After my 10th rotation in June of 2013, I now have 72 dog tags of service members that I did not bring home that were doing what I asked them to do in service of their country. Men and women whose families today are mourning their sacrifice, right? And so I made it important early on in my career uh, that this would be my why, that every single day of my life is gonna be in their honor. And so therefore, that keeps me moving forward. There is nothing more powerful in my life than that. In my mind, that honors their sacrifice. And really, that's what it's all about, right? You have gotta figure something that is bigger than you, that is more important than you, and you have to drill down on that. And that means to have the moral courage to stand up in front of people and say, I have post-traumatic stress. I have traumatic brain injury. I have been treated for both those. I had pain management issues. I've had both my hips replaced. Uh, discs and plates in my neck. Um, until I got that all taken care of, um, I was miserable. I came out on active duty, the first and last general officer to say, listen, I have post-traumatic stress, TBI. I have all these things, and I'm going to make it better for you. So I went to my subordinate leaders and I said, this is what I've done over the last two years. This is what I've seen. My Master Chief, Navy SEAL, E9, been through it all, said, I got to go too. I have the same issues. And he went. So now you got the two senior guys in the, in the organization admitting that they have these issues that are interfering with them being effective leaders, right, and effective fathers and husbands and getting help. Uh, I got contacted by a ton of people everywhere saying thank you for having the courage to do this. Except from one place above me, the general office above me, I got a call from one and he told me that it wasn't going to bode well for me. And I said, well, I'm not doing it for me. I'm doing it for the men and women that I work for because they're hurting. Something has got to be more important than your next star or your next promotion or whatever it happens to be. And in my opinion, that's people, right? People are more important. Put together a program and everybody in my unit, once we destigmatize this, came forward to get help. Less sexual harassment, less harassment in the workplace. That our drug and alcohol abuse went down, right? This is huge, right? This is huge for our people and their families. Leadership. We are in a crisis in this country at all levels. And we have to start getting it right. But it's about doing the right thing and telling the truth. And I owed it to my why.